Hi right, guys, you're with Tesla Tom. Thanks so much for joining us on Ludicrous Speed. I've got a very special guest with us today. I've got Lisa from San Francisco. She's an Aussie and she owns a Tesla Model 3. Thanks so much for joining us, Lisa. No problems, Tom. G'day, Australia. How long have you had your Model 3? So we've had it for seven months, um, seven great months, and it was a last minute decision, but we have not regretted it at all. Tell us some of the specs of the car. I guess it's a bit of a unicorn now. They, it's uh, Obsidian Black. It's a long range rear wheel drives. My understanding is they're not making the rear wheel drives anymore in this um, specification. Premium interior, full self-driving and autopilot. When we got it, it was 310 miles. Um, however, since Tesla unlocked um, more from the battery and over a software update, they uh, increased the range to 325 miles, mm. which is around 523 kilometers, totally free. Oh. Amazing. Can't get better than that. I get a notification on my app and, and it says you have a software update. I press go and while it's sitting in the garage, it just got extra range. A little bit about us. Um, we came to San Francisco nearly three years ago. Um, my husband actually works for Tesla. And so he had an amazing opportunity to come here and be a part of Tesla's mission. There was a lot of Australians here working for Tesla, which is great. Um, can you walk us through the delivery process of your car? We arrived and there was over 300 cars being delivered from the delivery hub in Fremont that day. But it wasn't like your usual experience at a car dealership. Everybody was so excited to be getting their cars. Everyone was walking around the lot, looking at all the cars. And there was a, a lot of owner advisors volunteering there that, that mm. day. So they were great to talk to as well. They fed us tacos and ice cream. Oh. It was a great day to be a part of. I mean, I've never heard of such a good experience getting a car. Back when we bought our Ford here, they left us sitting there for hours on end and it was it was no fun at all. And it was always this constant haggle over prices and things like that, which you don't get with Tesla. And all the staff are so friendly and helpful. And I've had a bit of experience with the service centres here, popped in there. Everybody's always happy to talk to you. Yep address any concerns. Now, Lisa, you're a mum, obviously. Um, has the car been sufficient for parental duties, like, you know, the school run, shopping, all that kind of thing? Yeah, it's been more than sufficient. We've got a 10-year-old and a nearly 13-year-old. There's plenty of room and their bags and sporting gear and friends. As you know, like in Australia, like there's a lot of SUVs on the road, a lot of parents yeah. driving SUVs. I think that's probably a concern moving to a car like this. I've actually found it an easy changeover. Space-wise, driving-wise, this car is a hell of a lot more nimble and um, easier to park and to get out of parks. And you know, so I don't notice the height difference at all. Here in the US, you know, we have probably heavier traffic, um, mm. more people and I'm, you know, darting in amongst that traffic here with no issue um, with all of the sensors and all of the cameras. It allows me to know my aware, my um, surroundings a lot better. I feel safer and more capable of being able to navigate sometimes treacherous conditions here in yes. the US. Okay, so what do your kids think of the car? They love the sketch pad, fart mode. You know, that's a family <laughs> favourite. I love that emissions, one. <laughs> emissions testing. <laughs> um, the Atari games, uh, being able to web browse while we're, you know, if we're sitting in the car waiting for one or the other because they go to different schools. In the premium model, they have heated back seats, oh, so nice. they love that. Love it. So they love, you know, even though we're in sunny California, yep. um, it does get quite cool um, in the in the winter. It's comfortable, roomy. They love the uh, the launch. Whoa, mum! Yeah. You know, yeah. slow down. You know, we always have a laugh over that. Oh, now. Oh, awesome. I love that. And that uh, comes standard, sorry. right, in all Model 3s? Yes, yes yeah. all Model 3s. So what are some of your favourite features of the car? First and foremost, it's the performance, you know, the ability to get where I need to go and quickly and safely and ad and very agile mm. and easy to drive. There's not all of this noise going on around you. you know, it's just quiet, it's like a magical carpet ride with armchairs, you know. But second is um, there's no uh, regular maintenance. Mm -hmm. So if it needs anything done, it'll tell me. It'll basically give me a pop-up and say, hey, you need the windscreen wiper fluid or anything else that's mm -hmm. required. Less moving parts means less cost um, of ownership. I don't even notice not having the speedometer of, the, of my um, steering wheel here anymore yep. or behind my steering wheel. I actually now intuitively just glance to the to the 
well, we will be for you to the left. For the me, left, it's yeah. the right. Yeah. yeah. So it, you don't even, you get used to it very quickly. I think it That's took good. me you know, less than a week. Another of my favourites is autopilot um, and navigate on autopilot, which is just mm-hmm. a life hack. You know, you just set it up to go and off you go. And we used it going to Sacramento recently and it was changing lanes on its own. So we use no confirmation. Yeah. Um, changing lanes on its own. I'm from uh, southern New South Wales originally. I grew up on a farm out there. And um, if I was using that in Australia, going from Melbourne to to family up there, I could sit and, you know, relax. And it was a three-hour drive or two-and-a-half-hour drive. It's a lot of long straights and a lot of, you know, quiet it's roads. Tiring. But yeah, it would be so much easier. Yeah, I think yeah. it the full self-driving in Australia will be, like, amazing, especially in those – out of out of uh, country areas, the interchanges here in the US, is, I mean, they're scary when you're driving yourself, yep. you know, because there's lanes joining and other ones, and you've got to get across a lane in about a hundred meters, right. and then get and in heavy traffic, and it's, you know, yeah. it's like this car is navigating all of that, and if they've taught this car to do that here, you know, Australia will be a walk in the park. This car has got smarter since I received it for free. Um, we've received dash cam. So I can record if there's an accident, if I'm in an accident, other people are in an accident. Mm. Um, I've got sentry mode. So now it, I can set set that when I leave the car, if I was leaving it in any sort of dodgy area, um, and it will record if it's triggered. So if anyone comes up to the car, it'll start recording. Um, and if anyone breaks into the car, a lot of the updates that have happened um, have occurred from feedback from customers. You know, people have said, can we have this? Or this wouldn't be really great. Do you think you can do it? And Tesla has made that happen. And some are just for fun. Um, the sound system in this model is particularly the premium is amazing. You know, you feel like you're sitting in a concert sometimes depending upon the song you're playing. Um, I haven't heard a car sound system as good ever. I don't have keys. That's another thing. My phone is my key. Yep. Um, I do carry the um, key card with the me. Card. Yep. Um, just in case, but um, I haven't had to use it. Something that people don't talk about, the customization that you can do with this car, your autopilot settings, your distance, you like to be from the car in front of you, mm. um, whether you want to use Navigate on autopilot, they're all customizable per driver. So mm. you don't have to set those every time you get in the car. I come down the street and my car opens my garage door for me. No, that's you awesome. Know, so it, it opens the door and um, it just makes it, you know, it's just like I said, there's it just makes life easier. So where whereabouts oh cool water bottle, by the way. I've got oh. to say. Thanks, Tom. I'll have to <laughs> score you one of these Please. some stage. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> and the, the, the t shirt, of course. Like how good is that? Mm. Just Yes, like, I've got my three. Yeah, very um, envious right now. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it won't be long. Now, whereabouts do you charge your car? How often and is it a hassle? So I charge my car right here where I'm sitting in my garage. I just charge about three to four times a week on this mobile connector cable that comes with the car. Once I get out of the car at the end of the day, um, I finish picking up the kids from wherever they've been um, and I just plug the car in and it automatically will start charging at my nominated time. So that's a set and forget. It starts charging at 11 because that's when our um, tower goes to off peak. It will stop charging when I either tell it to stop charging via my phone app or when I come out and unplug it. 50 to 60 kilometres a night. And that's all you need to use the day, isn't it, really? Your, your yeah, requirements. yeah. I mean, I actually some days don't use, I don't even use that, you know. Mm. So, you know, if I'm just tootling around town and going and shopping and picking up things, because a lot of the time it will be sitting on um, 80 to 90% charge, you know. If we were to be planning to go away for the weekend or something like that, I might charge it a bit more often to get it up to, you know, 90% or even 100% um, mm. during that week if it was planned. But if it's not planned, we will um, we will stop on the way at a supercharger. The other day we charged it, it took 25 minutes or something just to give her a top up um, and then came back home. It, we'd, I had time to go in, go to the toilet and have a mm. quick look, you know. Also, this car has also had the software update for version 3 chargers. Oh, so we can charge with those once those are released. And I'm pretty sure probably what you'll get in Australia is those when they start putting in more. I'm hoping. You know, the, the chicken and the egg. Yes. You know, more people are going to buy Tesla, so you get more superchargers and then, you know, life becomes even easier again. 
you know, a thousand kilometers an hour, you know, at 20 minute from nearly empty to full. Yeah. yeah I've heard people like go in for a meal and by the time they come out, it's done. I think it'll be that yes. quick one day. You don't even have time for a meal, I reckon, at 1,000 kilometres. Yeah, a lot of people are complaining here because they're <laughs> like, oh, I didn't even get time to yeah. finish my dinner. We're worried about getting idle fees. And that's what in Australia you're going to get. You're going to get what we have waited for. You've had wait, had to wait for the car in general, yeah. but you're going to get all these extras, which, yeah. um, you know, and, and all any of the teething issues that potentially yeah. have happened as well, yeah. you know, overcome. You know? Well, that's one benefit of having it later. Everything's been yeah. sorted out in the US already. All right, All right Lisa, last question. Um, Lisa, can you tell the mums and dads of Australia why is an electric car better than a petrol or a diesel car and why should they buy a Model 3 or an electric vehicle? The, t- the Model 3 has a five-star perfect rating, safety rating. So basically makes it one of the safest cars on the road. Um, why wouldn't you put your family in that car if there was an accident i'm giving my children and my husband would be thinking the same about all of us um keeping his family as safe as possible that's the main reason why they should buy a model 3 but an ev in general it's a no-brainer you know you're emission free you're doing your bit you're not putting pollution out into the atmosphere and all of the the repercussions that occur from that and it makes your life easier I find that my life is easier I don't have to think about going to a petrol station and filling up or worrying about um, servicing or you know any of those those things that you know come along with having a a petrol car and our internal combustion you know pass and and I think people need to realize that um, this is happening and that you can be a part of it and, you know, you can do your bit. So, you know, get on board. Let's do it. Very well said, Lisa. That was very good. All right, Lisa. Well, thank you very much for joining us on Ludicrous Feed. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for enlightening us on the benefits of the Model 3 with your ownership here in the USA. So thank you so much. Thank you. It's been great. I've um, really enjoyed sharing my experience, Tom, and hopefully um, Australians can get something out of that. They can um, follow me on Twitter at Osmum Tesla and uh, feel free to message me if they have any questions and yeah I'll, I'll be happy to answer Perfect. Um, and yeah hopefully we get to talk again Tom. Well thanks Lisa we might catch up again later on and, and see how things are going with you and your family. Great thanks Tom. Awesome all right guys <laughs> thanks for watching don't forget to like comment and subscribe leave a comment for Lisa and follow her on Twitter like she said and as always happy charging. I do solemnly promise should I win a Roadster 2020 in Tesla's new referral program to list this vehicle on an electric car sharing platform to allow all Australians an opportunity to drive this magnificent car as part of a greater effort to bring the electric vehicle to this great nation. Hashtag Roadster Help me by using my referral code Thomas7208.